I've owned many, many lenses throughout the years, but one has always stood out far, far beyond the rest. Despite its heavy weight, large size, and overall not really rating that high when we look at the technical stats, here's why I love this lens far, far more than any other. What's cracking my photography friends? I'm TK North, hope you're all doing fantastic. I'm doing pretty well. Why may you ask? Well, simply I just love talking about this lens. If you watch my channel at all, you'll probably know I'm talking about the RF 50mm f1.2 lens from Canon. For me, I first tried this lens over four years ago now on a trip to Japan. I actually was loaning the lens just to try it out with the EOS R. Now, about a month later, I sold a bunch of gear to buy the R. So, well, partly so I could use this lens. Here we are now over 41,000 photos later and I still love it to bits. So this lens certainly isn't for everyone. It's large, it's heavy, and yes, it is quite expensive. But for me and the photography style that I really love to shoot, this lens has been a real game changer. Of course, it still does have a number of downsides. There's definitely no perfect lens, but there's a lot of reasons I keep reaching for this mother over and over. Now, if you shoot a similar style of photography to me, I think you're going to feel the same. Let's start with probably the most obvious reason. That of course is having a maximum aperture of f1.2. Now I have heard people say when talking about this lens, why on earth would you need a lens with a maximum aperture of f1.2? Now, for a lot of people, this may be true. You may shoot a certain style of photography where having a really wide aperture like this just isn't that useful. The second reason people might say this is they just haven't tried a high quality lens at f1.2. However, if you're like me and you really love shooting anything with that real crispy bokeh, beautiful narrow depth of field, this is something that I personally really like bringing to my own photography and really playing around with. This is ultimately why I love this lens so much. Not only is it super crispy, the image quality you get even wide open at f1.2 is actually really, really impressive on this lens. This is something that may not be true for a lot of other f1.2 lenses out there, including the older EF mount version of this lens. So just having the ability to shoot at 1.2 and getting really sharp images doing it, this is ultimately what makes this lens so good, but also what makes it so expensive. So for me, I do commonly shoot with this lens wide open at f1.2. If you're a photographer that really likes shooting with lenses, especially prime lenses wide open, then perhaps you will really like this lens as well. So that brings me to the next point, which of course is image quality or sharpness. Now, if you do search this lens up on any of the sites that rate and give you overall image quality or sharpness, you'll find that it performs well, but it's not outstanding. And there is far cheaper lenses rated much higher. Some of these are lenses I've owned, other lenses I've also used, but by far the sharpness that you get out of this lens, I actually really do prefer, regardless of its technical rating. So numbers like this are obviously still useful, but they do only tell us part of the story. We still need to look at the images and see what we actually prefer with our own eyes, rather than simply just looking at the numbers and seeing, okay, this lens has scored higher, of course it's better which may be true in some cases, but not always. Sometimes a mere technical number can't always give us all the answers. Let's just call this next point something special. Now there is just something special about this lens that is hard to quantify with technical numbers. If we look at the image quality, it just renders such a beautiful image. I just love how these images look, even when shooting in conditions like directly into harsh sunlight. There's also little to no chromatic aberration. And just look at this beautiful fall off between the in-focus area and the out-of-focus areas, even when shooting at f1.2. I even really love the look of the bokeh that you get out of this lens. And if you can't tell, there's just something I can't put my finger on, which may be the overall quality of the glass that just renders such a nice image. I don't own the RF 85mm 1.2 lens, but I have used it on quite a few occasions. 
and for some reason I still really prefer the 50 millimeter. So next up we have the autofocus. Now I have used this lens across three different cameras now. I started with the R, the R5 and the R6 and across all these three cameras the autofocus has performed stellar. Even on the R which had obviously an inferior focusing system to the R5 and R6 it just rarely ever ever missed and if it did it definitely wasn't the lens's fault it was probably more the user so even at 1.2 where the room for missing focus is super narrow this lens really nails focus over and over and over again you really don't even have to worry about closing down your aperture just in case it slightly misses because it just doesn't and there's really not much else to say on the autofocus because it really is that good. So next up we have the focal length. So for me this is an obvious one because 50 millimeter is actually my favorite focal length to shoot. For me 50 is probably the most versatile prime in my opinion. It's wide enough to capture a nice kind of detailed shot to what our eyes would see when we focus on something in a real world situation. It's great for shooting people and renders such a beautiful shape to people's faces. I also find it great for capturing things like street photography scenes and even finer detail shots when shooting from a bit closer up as well. Although I don't shoot heaps of weddings, I do occasionally shoot them and this lens will always be on one of my cameras for most of the day in a range of different situations because it really just is such a great lens and a great focal length. But is this lens really for you? Well, chances are it may not be. At its price point, it's definitely not for everyone and it really limits itself more to professional users only. If you are a casual photographer though, I don't think you want to consider this lens anyway. It is quite heavy and not one you want to be carrying day to day unless you are a professional. If you're a professional though and you use this day in day out, you shoot a lot at 50 mil and you're really going to make the most of that maximum aperture of f1.2, then I think you should definitely consider this lens. There is something very special about it and I'm sure you won't regret trying it out. For me, I love shooting at 50 millimeter. It's probably my favorite focal length and I really love using shallow depth of field. So for me as a professional using this lens day in, day out, it really is a no brainer. And I think this lens is definitely worth it if you tick a lot of those same boxes as me. Lastly, if you are umming and ahhing about this lens, perhaps you can loan it just to try out first. Actually on second thoughts, that's what I did and I ended up buying it a month later. So if you think this lens is too expensive for you, perhaps don't try it out or you might end up trying to sell an arm or a leg just to get your hands on it. All right, again, thanks so much for watching. Keep on creating and keep on growing, my friends. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.